this is question one and I'm going to evaluate our horror poster in terms of this. First of all, I'm going to talk about how we used the codes for the typical codes and convention to create our horror poster. A, a typical code of convention of um, a horror poster is to have a dark and dim lighting when taking a picture. We did this by going to a secluded area of the college where the lighting was, wasn't too much. However, we had a problem because the lighting was too dim. So what we did was we set up a lighting area and then that projected light onto our main image so it, was, it, it became okay to take a picture. Um, secondly, I'm going to talk about the codes and conventions of the title when creating a horror poster. Our title of our horror poster was Wretch. As you can see, it's very short and snappy and easy to remember. Other films that have a short and snappy title are Orphan and Psycho. How we came up with this, with this name is that we um, searched syn synonyms to the name Despicable and Wretch came up as someone who was miserable and unhappy. So we thought this really did go well with our killer. Third, I'm going to talk about the curves and conventions of the image on um, um, horror posters. We done a medium close-up shot of our um, killer, as you can see. Other horror posters that use um, their main image as the killer are Hannibal and the intruders. Hannibal, the main image is of his face and he has a mask right up to here and his eyes have been edited to become really glossy and brown. Now even though it's um, a close-up shot, there is something significant about this is that you can tell that something is wrong in the picture, you can tell that it's a horror genre because of the mask he had on. Same as intruders. It's a picture of a man, however his eyes have been as if they've dug, been dug down. So that also has a horror element to it, that something's not quite right in the picture. That's what we have done. Our picture is of a woman, a cloaked woman wearing lipstick. However, she is actually distorting her face by grabbing it. And that should show the audience straight away that there's something wrong and that this belongs to the horror genre. Lastly... I'm going to talk about the tagline. Most horror posters have taglines, so we also done a tagline. This is another way how we use the codes and conventions. Our tagline is the smell of fear. The smell of fear is what she craves. Now I'm going to talk about how we challenge typical codes and conventions when creating our horror poster. Most horror movies have a male killer and we've chosen to have a female killer and she's featured on the front of our poster. She's featured wearing this cloak which is similar to the Grim Reaper cloak and she has it over her face so you can only see her nose and her lips. Because she is covered like this you can't really tell whether she's male or female so we wanted to make it evident that she was female. To make it evident, we used the bruise wheel to create a purplish lipstick by mixing the black and the maroon together. That in itself is actually challenging a code of convention because when women are usually featured in films or horror films, the lipstick they use is usually a bright red. For example, um, the film Jennifer's Body or True Blood. How we challenge the whole code of convention is using a female killer and featuring her on the front of our, our poster. Lastly, to, for question one of the evaluation, I have to talk about how I developed codes of conventions when creating my group's our poster. However, we didn't I didn't develop any. I just stick stuck to using and challenging the conventions. Now I want to talk about the good things and the bad things that um, happened when creating the horror poster. First of all, I wasn't too clear or too knowledgeable on the terminology on Photoshop. So I wanted to do things to the poster but I didn't know what it was called. For example, I wanted to burn the edges. I know what it means now because Christian, a member of my group, helped me. I burned the edges to make it more dark and dim. 
Secondly, when creating the poster, I did it on the wrong canvas size and I wouldn't have been able to submit that for our group's coursework. Um, so I had to redo that on a different canvas size. What went good um, about creating the poster was that my team really liked it. So for, for it to go well, all the team members had to be happy with the final production than they was. And lastly, the other good thing about our poster was that the picture I took was in focus and it was very clear.